Hello everybody, welcome to our Throwback Thursday episode where we look at the history of our parks, our natural resources, and our recreation. Today I want to talk about the history of one of my favorite cooking implements, the Dutch oven. And talk about not only how this implement helped shape our nation, but how our nation actually shaped the modern Dutch oven that we see today. Now the earliest history of the Dutch oven can be traced back to the English in the 17th century. Of course, back then, their cooking pots and implements were made of brass, which was a fairly expensive material. They did, however, find that the Dutch had a much more inexpensive way of casting. So in 1704, a man named Abraham Darby went over to the Netherlands to see how it was done. He discovered that their casting, they used molds of sand, where the English used loam and clay. The sand also left a nicer finish to the pots. So he took that back to England, started his own company, but figured he could sell more pots if he could make it of a much more inexpensive material, like iron. Of course, the first few castings were very unsuccessful. To a, an employee of his, a Welshman, helped figure out a way to make it successful, and in 1707, they patented the process. Of course, because the process was Dutch in history, that's where it got the name Dutch Oven. Of course, the Dutch Oven, the name itself, can cover a lot of different pots in different shapes and styles. Now, while the term Dutch oven may have meant a blanket term for a lot of different pots and different shapes and styles, the modern Dutch oven we see here today was thanks to the American colonies. In fact, it was one famous industrialist that was helped design the modern Dutch oven we see here today. He introduced a shallower Dutch oven, also put the feet on the bottom, which helps keep it stable when cooking over coals, and also added this little lip on the lid which means when you put coals or anything to cook on top of here, it didn't fall into the dish for a little uh, extra seasoning. And of course, you're probably wondering who this famous industrialist is. Just stick around to the end of the video. I'll let you know. You might be surprised. But the colonies, they love these for their versatility and their durability. For their versatility, they could bake, stew, roast, cook, fry, about anything you could do in a modern conventional oven nowadays could be done right here in this Dutch oven. As far as their durability goes, these could span a generation. I know campers nowadays that are still using Dutch ovens handed down to them by their grandparents. In fact, they were so valuable in that way that in the 18th and 19th century, they were left in a lot of last will and testaments. I mean, this isn't something that you wanted to leave to just any family member. And as the American colonies started to spread westward, this went with them. It was part of the gear list of Lewis and Clark as they headed northwest. The, in the 1800s, the Mormon pioneers that headed westward brought these with them. The mountain men, as they explored the frontier, had these. And even going into the 20th century, if there was a cattle train with a chuck wagon, you knew a Dutch oven was going to be in it. So big was this in shaping the American that we have today that it is the official cooking pot of the states of Utah, Arkansas, and of course, Texas. Now one of the things I do love about a Dutch oven is how easy they are to care for. Now you'll hear something with Dutch ovens and that is called they're seasoned. And that is something that comes with use. Once you're done with it, what, the way to clean one of these out is to use boiling water and a soft brush or sponge to clean out anything excess that you got in there. You want to try, I try to avoid soap just so that doesn't affect the seasoning that's in there. Now after that's done, you want to make sure to thoroughly dry it. This is bare iron, so it can get rusty if left wet. Once it's dry, just adding a little bit of oil and a paper towel to just give it a nice, very thin coat to it. Not so much that you have a lot of excess over. And if you store it, make sure it's stored dry. You can leave the lid off to make sure there's airflow, or at least put a paper towel in there to keep it nice and dry. And this thing, as I said, will last generations. I've met campers that are using Dutch ovens that their grandparents handed down to them. And if you do happen to find one of these in maybe a garage sale or a secondhand store and it looks rusty, they're probably going to give you a really good deal on it. But there are YouTube videos out there that will show you how to take a rusty old cast iron and make it look shiny brand new again. And so don't, don't pass one of these up if you see it and it's rusty because it's still got great life to it. So I hope you enjoyed this Throwback Thursday episode looking at the history of our parks, our natural resources, and our outdoor recreation. 
I hope you look forward to some recipe videos we'll have coming up where we'll cook some modern recipes with this, as well as look at some historic recipes that were cooked out of the Dutch oven. Of course, before I let you go, you're probably wondering who? Who is the American industrialist that was credited for the modern design of the Dutch oven? Well, he was a silversmith, engraver, early industrialist, and, pion and patriot during the Revolutionary War. After the war, continued as a silversmith, using the profits to get into iron casting, bronze bell, and cannon casting. Also was the first American to roll copper into sheets for sheathing on naval vessels. Of course, you probably still have no clue who that is, because that's not normally how we remember Paul Revere. <laughs> that's right, the Midnight Rider, the man who rode across the colonies announcing the arrival of the British troops, was the man responsible for our modern Dutch oven. Which is why when I'm ready to call people in for dinner, I will proudly announce, the biscuits are coming, the biscuits are coming. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that. Check back for another Throwback Thursday episode, and again, look forward to those recipes. Y'all take care.